Hey fellas, got some tea. A little late in the day for coffee. Uh, I've been slaving away at the Revel XSL-01 man spaceship. <laughs> and I'll tell you what, uh, hopefully the hard part's over with, and I think it is. The, uh, the, big, the major part was extending those boosters and then getting them clean enough to apply a natural metal finish. And after about a thousand coats of, of um, Mr. Servicer 1000 and 1500, uh, got them to where I think I, I can apply the gloss black and then the natural metal finish. So here they are, and you'll get to see them in this video. I show you, uh, I, I don't know, I forget what I show you, but uh, I, I think I do do a little bit of scribing on this. And uh, I scribe over the primer, which is, I, I'm thinking that's going to be my go-to now. Whenever I have to scribe resin parts, I did it on the last kit. And uh, it really seemed to work out well, rather than trying to scribe into two different kinds of surfaces. I had to lot, use a lot of my, my uh, CA metallic pigment filler and a few other things to get these to where they were not wobbly and that they were somewhat straight. So I think probably if you took like a, um, a measuring, a, a real... Uh, accurate measuring device it might be just a little off but it, it honestly it looks really good I'm, I'm really uh really proud of of how these came out so yay got these done uh i'm not sh these are supposed to like s like come apart but they don't stick together so i don't know if i'm doing something wrong or not but uh i'm gonna have to end up gluing them otherwise they're it's just gonna like fall apart and yeah, I don't, I don't understand. I don't know, but uh, is what it is. I also get to work on the platform. The owner had sent me the uh, the platform pieces that he had. There's only one piece missing, which I, which I uh, had to scratch build, and that's this little piece right here. So I show you that, and I just got it painted and put a gloss coat on it. I'm not going to do any weathering. It's just going to be just a plain painted everything so uh anyway i'll quit jibber jabbing uh hope everybody's doing well and uh, let's get on with the video all right let's take a look at the two cylinders which as you can see are in different states of repair this one is ready to be scribed and this one is in the process of me filling the the gaps and seams now to get this one to this state what i've done is Use my Zappa Gap CA and uh, metallic pigment, my gunmetal pigment from Ammo MIG, to fill in the seams. And this one, I've, I've still got a lot of, lot of work to do. But uh, I want to get the other one done first. And then what I'll do, when then what I did is I came along with Mr. Servicer, gave it a good coat, saw where my issues were, went back, refilled some areas with the uh, CA and metallic pigment sprayed several more coats, uh, sanded, wet sanded, and now I've got a nice, shiny, smooth, hard surface in which to scribe my panel lines. Now, my idea is with scribing, I'm not, I don't wanna scribe real deep panel lines. Uh, if you look at the panel lines on this one, they're real shallow, and I'm not gonna be doing any weathering to this. This is gonna be just a straight paint job. But I do want to replicate the panel lines that were on the original. <clears throat> and hopefully you can see that. I'll turn down the light a little bit. But the panel lines are real shallow. <clears throat> and if you'll notice, there are double panel lines right along here. Uh, two sets of double panel lines along the top and the bottom. And one of the reasons that I'm leaving this other one unfinished while I finish this one is so I can replicate the panel lines and I'm doing that by measuring from the known panel line which is the top one on both of these with a piece of tape that way I can keep my lines consistent and straight all the way down so I'm gonna base my panel lines off the top and then base my next panel line off that one just by using a uh, standard tape 
So, <clears throat> but to make those double panel lines, I've got a set of RB production scribers and I rarely use these. Now, here is the original RB production scriber and it's just got the, uh, the little one tip there. And I really like this. It gets, gives you real nice fine panel lines. It's a little more difficult to use. Uh, and then I went, it, at some point I accidentally ordered these double pointed scribers for making those double panel lines. Well, like I said, I think I've used them maybe once, but uh, it's gonna come in handy with this because this is what I'm gonna use to make those double panel lines. So let's get started. And I know that this top panel line is approximately the uh, width of my 10 millimeter Tamiya tape. And these don't have to be exact based on the uh, exact placement based off the original because I have lengthened them. So you would think theoretically that they would be slightly elongated. So I'm just taking my Tamiya tape and I'm using this as my measuring device to get a consistent width of this panel line. Okay. Now I'm gonna take some high Q tape. If you've never seen this, it's okay. I, I really like Dymo tape because it's a little bit thicker, but this this has its uses. This is made for scribing. And uh, I think you can get it at Hobby World USA, I think is where I got mine. Uh, actually, I might have got this on Amazon, I'm not sure. But it's a uh, fairly thick tape, but it does handle curves a little bit better than Dymo tape does. So we'll cut a section off. And I'm gonna come along and use my Tamiya tape as a guide to lay down my scribing tape. All right. Okay. And here comes the challenging part because any mistakes that I make are going to be a pain in the eye, uh, butt to clean up. So that should be even with the top. Okay, so now let's get my double scriber out. And I'm just going to lightly, and this is somewhat not as easy as it looks, but I'm just gonna slowly go around and I'm gonna turn the part rather than move my scriber. So it's almost like I'm using a lathe, only my hand is the motor of the lathe. Okay, now if I make a mistake and go off, I want to go off and lift it off the, on the tape side. Oh man, that's uh, <laughs> I know it's just a model, but it's kind of heart wrenching. 
when I'm doing that, knowing all the work that I put into getting this finished just so nicely, that any mistake's gonna cause me a lot more work. Okay. So it looks, Get my other scriber in here. I think that's about as good as I'm going to get it, man. I hate to go over that again. The bottom panel line doesn't look that strong but I think once we get it painted it'll be okay because <clears throat> I don't have an extremely thick coat on here and I'm hesitant but yet I can't resist going over it again for some reason somewhat difficult because you got to keep both of those prongs down even so if one's lifted up it's not giving you as deep of a mark and then if I wanted I guess I could come over with with a razor saw, but then that's gonna give me a really wide, I don't know that I wanna do that. So, I'm gonna get these all in and we can take a look here and see what it looks like. So, it's not too bad. And then I'll put another coat of primer, just a real thin coat before I do everything. And, uh, and, and then I can work with it then, but. I really hate to go over it more than twice because it will, uh, I'll end up messing it up. So that's how I'm doing the, uh, the panel lines and scribing those. And then obviously when I come back, I'll have to, uh, I'll do these with the single scribing tool and then I'll come down and do the straight lines and then get my scribing templates out and then do all the hatches. So that's how that's going. Okay, so I've been working on this uh, double set of boosters for the last <laughs> day and a half. And yesterday I just spent all day sanding and trying to get it smooth and straight. Uh, it was a lot of work because this, uh, I think it was on this side, was a little cockeyed. And I uh, had to sand it down, but I got it pretty straight. And uh, I got it to where I wanted it. I've got a couple coats of Mr. Servicer 1000 on it till I ran out. So then I went to uh, Mr. Finishing Surfacer 1500, which is basically the same thing, but uh, a little more thinned out. And uh, so I've got some a bunch of coats on there. And once I get got that on there, I could see a few little places where some of the panel lines were still showing through. So let's zoom in real quick. And I ended up taking a brush and going over the panel lines with some some of this to try to fill those in. So now I'm just taking some 800 grit sandpaper and I'm wetting it down and going along and just sanding away where I had went over it to cover up those panel lines and I'll come back over it again and give it a few more coats of this Mr. Servicer 1500. And then I should be able to, should be ready to rescribe it. So, and, and the reason that I use the, the water on this and, and wet sand it is because if you don't it ends up clogging up the uh, sandpaper and it takes a long t takes a lot of pieces of sandpaper and I'm almost out actually but this just helps keep my sandpaper unclogged 
and I'm not putting a whole lot of pressure on here because I don't really want to dig in and, and make more scratches. I'm just wanting to smooth and flatten those brush marks and keep the remaining Mr. Surfacer and those little indentions where the panel lines were. And it doesn't take a whole lot. I just let the sandpaper do the work. And then you can see this stuff that comes off of it. Just the, uh, the wet primer. So I am seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. These things were a pain in the butt. <laughs> I've got the other ones, uh, the, uh, the other boosters done. So I'll go grab those. You can take a look at those. So here are the other boosters. They both turned out really well. I'm really happy with these. And uh, I've got all the panel lines matched up. So there we go. So I'm going to keep working on this. I'll get these straightened out. And I got in from the owner the other day the platform. So I've started gluing this together just to give myself a break from sanding. And uh, I ended up... Uh, this was partially glued when he sent it to me. So... Uh, I ended up popping off one of these little platform things. And a lot of these platforms are broken. So I'm going to have to repair those. He sent me some, uh, I've got, I think, two or three more platforms that I actually need. So I'll probably cut some sections off the ones I'm not going to use and repair these. Uh, another issue that I ran into was there are two of these little things that uh, I guess hold the rocket up that are supposed to swivel. And you attach this to the platform with these little rectangular things and they go on here just like so. Well, I'm missing one of these. So what I'm doing is I'm scratch building with plastic card another piece <laughs> so I'm in the process of this if this doesn't work out I'll have to figure something else out so I'm uh, scratch building a piece and hopefully this will work out I've got them glued up basically just a uh, thick plastic card I think 0 0.05 millimeter plastic card and I'm sandwiching them together so basically I'm just getting a getting these formed and my nose is stopped up because it's in the morning and I've got allergies so um, so I'll uh I'll get to work on this. Hopefully that will work out. But that is where I'm at. And I'm going to get to sanding. Get some more coats of primer on here. See where I'm at. Check it again. And then start scribing. And then another coat of primer. And I should be done with these crazy boosters that have been uh, a real pain in the butt. But I knew those were going to be a, a mess to begin with. So, alrighty. I'll see you in a bit. All right, we are moving ahead, and I've been kind of working off and on on this platform. I cleaned up this little edge right here, and like I said before, it was glued. Now, some of these areas, there was one of these little pillars that was broken or popped off because I guess the old glue is so brittle that uh, it just popped off. Now, one of the ways that I'm going, I deal with this to get a real good solid join because my glue isn't really working that well on this old plastic. I'm using my sprue goo, which is sprue and to me a extra thin quick setting. So this is what I'm using and on this it's really not that big of a deal because it's kind of all a cluttered mess anyway. But I'm just putting a little bit of sprue goo on here. And then if I want I can come back with some to me a extra thin and a brush. And Thin this out just a little bit and maneuver it around before it dries. And it's not going to look perfect, but if I don't do this, I'm afraid this is just going to pop off. And I think once it gets painted and it's 
you know, this is going to be kind of deep within the recesses of this little platform that you're really not going to notice. And it does, this sprue goo does shrink up a bit. So I am just putting some sprue goo in there. Put a little bit more back in here so I can get this nice and sturdy because this is going to be holding up the rocket. So I do want it nice and sturdy. Put a little bit back in there. Okay, and that should be good to go. Now, uh, we saw that I was working on scratch building the part to hold up these uh, crane type uh, holder rocket holding thingies. So obviously this one's got the original parts and this is supposed to swivel. It's pretty tight. So I, I guess kids used to play with this stuff. I don't know. I can't imagine a kid nowadays playing with with a model, but uh, apparently kids back then used to play with these things. So uh, they must have been a lot more delicate than, than I was when I was a kid. But I've got my scratch built part made and I, I'm happy with it. I think it turned out really well. Here's the opposing part and it's pretty darn close. So once I get these painted up, unless you're looking close, you're probably not gonna be able to tell. Now I didn't add the little buttons and tiny switches in there, which, you know, somewhat irrelevant anyway. But uh, yeah, I think it's gonna work. Uh, I've already test fitted it and it does work. And let's see, it goes like this. So this one just gets in here. And this, like I said, was just pieces of uh, 0 0.05 millimeter plastic card sandwiched together. And then I cut it and shaped it. And I'm knocking everything over. But uh, it does work. And it fits up there. So we should be good to go on that. So there it is. I'm going to get to gluing these parts. I still have a little bit of rescribing on the double boosters and I've made some errors so I've went ahead and filled those in with some Mr. Servicer 1000 which I got in yesterday but uh, and then once I get these all sanded down and taken care of my little mistakes then we'll uh, I'll, I'll scribe the rest of the little hatches and stuff and put my final coat of primer on it and we should be good to go on this part of the rocket ship uh, next up will be the Moonship, which I'm, I've been kind of playing with it, and it's not fitting. the uh, The top is supposed to snap in and snap on and off. Uh, I don't know how that's going to work. It doesn't seem to be working right now, but I don't have all the parts in. Uh, one thing I did do, the owner had sent me the extra small nose cone. Let me grab the moonship piece the extra small nose cone for the small boosters and they fit on here just like this and this does fit out kind of tight actually but um, the other part the original part was supposed to fit on here like this and it opens up and does all kinds of crazy stuff and he thought it might be best just to use this because it looks better the uh, other closed part so I ended up doing some surgery because the tail fin on the moon ship fits in here just like so. So this wasn't here. I ended up cutting the opposite side open just like the, the original part and it fits perfectly. So I basically just took my Dremel and went right down the center line and then used a, a file and got in there and filed it and it fits perfect. So that's gonna work out and it'll look much better than that open and close part that they have in there. So that's where I'm at. That should be enough for this episode. Uh, I will uh, flash up some pictures and I will see you on the next episode. Thanks for watching.